Yo, yo, I'm Drew Gilchrist, and recently in the last year, there's been a huge rise in these THC variants. Stuff like Delta 8 THC, Delta 10, THC O, HHC, and many, many more. And today, I wanted to talk about why I personally choose to stay well, well away from these things. And this might not be the same opinion for everyone, this is just my opinion, but I really haven't seen many people approach it this way, so um, yeah, figured I'd give it a fresh take here. Might be a bit of a hot take, but hey. <laughs> but quickly, before we get into this video, though, we need to have a message from our sponsor of the day, Oliver Stew. Yo, Oliver Stew is an online head shop and they have absolutely everything that I know you guys need. Like accessories, papers, like devices, vapes, everything. And you can get 15% off anything on their website with discount code DREW420. So if there's any accessory you've been needing, get 15% off with Drew420. Link is in the pinned comment down below. So thank you guys for supporting the sponsors and let's get into this video. So first of all, what are these THC variants? I'm sure some of you guys out there might not even know what I'm talking about. And especially if you're from England because they're really not as big here as they are in America for reasons that we will discuss later on in the video. But essentially what these are is these are THC variants that are legal. So in most places, the only thing that's actually illegal when it comes to cannabis is Delta 9 THC. This is because of hemp laws. Most places in the world don't have hemp illegal. Um, and you can't really just make cannabis illegal if you want hemp to be legal. So the way they get around this is they make Delta 9 THC illegal because that's the THC that's naturally in cannabis, which, you know, gets you high and most people think of when they think of cannabis. Now, almost all of these THC variants that have propped up in the last year are actually natural occurring substances in the cannabis plant. Or at least that's what the people selling them would want you to think because no, they're not. They aren't. <laughs> yes, technically, some of these are in cannabis naturally in 0.0001%. None, absolutely none of these variants that you see online are natural at all. Absolutely none of them are naturally extracted as much as they would like to word everything to seem like it is. They like to say that they are a natural current substance because technically they are. Technically they are in the cannabis plant, but that's not how they got them. The way these are usually made is they get CBD or they get Delta 8 or they get a different variation of THC and they mix it with a specific type of acid for a certain amount of time and then that converts whichever cannabinoid you had in originally to whichever cannabinoid you want afterwards. So for example, you could start with CBD, mix it with some acid for like 17 hours or whatever, and then come out with Delta 8 THC afterwards. This is of course a synthetic process and not natural. And I find this to be extremely misleading, especially when so many people message me about this every day. And then I tell them that this stuff is synthetic cannabinoids. And then they come back to me like, what? No, it's not, it's natural, bro. So let's take some of these stuff specifically, like Delta 8 and HHC. Both of these, when you look at them on paper, they are in cannabis naturally and they're less potent than THC and theoretically they should be safe but that's just theoretically like I said these are only naturally in the cannabis plant at 0.01 or 0.001 or 0.000001 percent right not enough to really have an effect on your body, let alone long-term effects, right? And none of this stuff has been studied. And although these things look like they should be safe on paper, there isn't really any proof of that. Okay, now we're gonna get into the territory of where you'll start understanding where my concern comes from. So you also have stuff like THCO, which is supposedly a much more potent version of THC, made in one of these same processes where they convert a cannabinoid in a synthetic way. Now, in my mind, I don't know if anyone else shares this opinion with me, but are we not going back in time? Does nobody remember what happened with Spice? For any of you guys who don't know, I'm sure you've heard of Spice at some point or legal highs or synthetics. But in about sort of 2009 to about 2013, 2014, there was this big wave of these herbal incense. And it was where people would get a random plant and they would spray it with a synthetic cannabinoid that was made in a lab. So they're making a cannabinoid in a lab and they spray that shit on it and then they sell it. And then that is what spice is, right? And these chemicals, were unknown. And at the beginning, everyone thought they were fine. Like they started off being just, you know, slightly different versions of THC. Like, oh, they get THC and they just change it like ever so slightly. So that way it's legal and technically a different compound. And then you see how mad the long-term effects were and how different it was from actual THC. And so this is why in my mind, the way I see it is these are synthetic cannabinoids. Right, the THCO, the Delta 8, the Delta 10, the HHC, the THCP, whatever. These are all 
synthetically made cannabinoids. They are essentially spice. <laughs> and don't get me wrong here, I appreciate that this is quite an extreme approach when it comes to just that, because like I said, on paper, it seems like everything's fine. And these cannabinoids are produced in cannabis naturally, which I guess is better than what spice used to be, which they'd make cannabinoids which didn't exist anywhere else in the world, right? Assuming that all of my worries are completely unfounded and that I shouldn't be equating it to spice and that it's not really the same at all. Let's just say that that is the situation. All of these companies that are making these THC variants are doing so completely unregulated. Like I said, they're getting CBD and mixing this stuff with acid, right? And then cleaning it afterwards. Who knows how well the cleaning process is? Who knows if their tests on the website are real or not? And on top of this, sometimes in the conversion process, Delta 9 THC is made which is illegal, which means if these people were doing it, you know, in a, a regulatory manner, it would kind of be impossible, at least for the most part with a lot of them. Some of these ones don't convert into Delta 9 during it, but a lot of them do. So I told you guys at the beginning of the video that more US people have heard of this than UK people, right? And that's because in the UK, we did a general psychoactive substance ban. This was to get rid of spice when it was a huge thing in the UK. Now in the US, I think they just did it in the way of they just banned individual chemicals. And that means in the US, all of these are legal. And in the UK, they aren't because they come under the psychoactive substance ban just as spice does. And honestly, I think that does play a part into why I equate these things so much because obviously in the UK, it's all banded together because you know, it's a synthetically made cannabinoid <laughs> because that is what it is at the end of the day. And you know, I, I said all this stuff and even as I'm saying it, I kind of think like, oh, am I, am I being a bit extreme here? Am I being a bit over the top? But then I say that again and it's like, these are synthetic cannabinoids, right? And that was the whole thing that everyone was warned about for years. <laughs> and we're just taking a step back because this is the thing, it's more a slippery slope thing. Okay, let's say Delta 8 and HHC are perfectly safe and perfectly fine and all the regulations everyone's doing is super clean and super nice. Well, what happens when these THC variants keep changing even more and even more, especially now that we've gotten to the point where there's THCO, which is 300% more potent than THC. Sounding familiar? Because to me, it's like I've taken a time machine to 2012 and I'm seeing, you know, your local head shop selling Bear Spice behind the counter. That just does not seem like the brightest idea to me. That's my thoughts on this. If you guys have different thoughts than me, I would love to see them in the comments down below because I really haven't seen that many people have the same take as me. It might be a hot take. It might be some shit take. Maybe I have a bad opinion. I don't know, that's the whole point in the comment section. But this is my opinion as it stands and I think it's pretty valid. So people, make sure to like this video if you liked it. Make sure to hit the subscribe button just down here. Um, I know there's been loads and loads of new people joining the channel recently. And just so people know as well, I was gonna make a drug iceberg part four today, but I woke up a little bit under the weather and I'm supposed to go Spain tomorrow. So uh, for Spanibis, so <laughs> you know, I kind of want to make sure I don't overwork myself. So that way I'm 100% feeling good for tomorrow. Um, yeah, and then the next THC tester video will be coming out in about a week or two. So stay tuned for that. People, I already said like and subscribe, I'm pretty sure. So make sure you leave that comment down below and uh, people, I will see you very soon. Make sure to hit up the sponsor of the day, Oliver Studer in the pinned comment down below. In a bit, peace.